Good morning and welcome to St. Luke's this morning. Thank you for worshipping with us. We pray that you are at home and safe with your families. And if you're on your own, do feel part of what we're doing. We love to have you with us. And it's great to have you here this morning. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set, to set forth His praise, to hear His Holy Word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation, and so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship You. Let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess any sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Our opening hymn is The God of Abraham Prays. <laughs> and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Worship the Lord in the beauty 
of holiness. Come, let us adore him. Our first lesson is from the Old Testament, from Genesis. God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. He said, take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains with that I will show you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. He cut the wood for the burnt offering and set out and went to the place in the distance that God had shown him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place far away. Then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac, and he himself carried the fire and the knife. So the two of them walked on together. Isaac said to his father Abraham, Father, and he said, Here I am, son. He said, The fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God himself will provide the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So the two of them walked on together. When they came to the place that God had shown them, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. He said, Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. Then Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, The Lord will provide, as it is said to this day, On the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 13. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long shall I have perplexity in my mind and grief in my heart day after day? How long shall my enemy triumph over me? Look upon me and answer me, O Lord my God. Give light to my eyes, lest I sleep in death. Lest my enemy say, I have prevailed over him, and my foes rejoice that I have fallen. But I put my trust in your mercy. My heart is joyful because of your saving help. I will sing to the Lord, for he has dealt with me richly. I will praise the name of the Lord Most High. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen.
Right, the epistle today is from Romans. Do not let sin exercise dominion in your mortal bodies to make, sure, make you obey their passions. No longer present to your members to sin as instruments of wickedness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and present your members to God as instruments of righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law, but under grace. What then? Should we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? But thanks be to God that you, having once been slaves of sin, have become obedient from the heart to the form of teaching to which you are entrusted, and that you, having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your member as slaves to impurity and to greater and greater iniquity, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness for sanctification. When you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. So what advantage did you get from the things of which you are now ashamed? The end of those things is death. But now that you have been freed from sin and enslaved to God, the advantage you get is sanctification. The end is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our Gospel anthem is a trumpet prelude by Marc Antoine Charpentier. The Holy Gospel of our Saviour, Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Jesus said, Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. 
And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly, I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Again in our scripture today, the disciples are about to go out on a mission to share the gospel. We heard about this a few weeks ago, but uh, here it is again in, in Matthew's gospel. They go out to cast out unclean spirits and cure every disease and sickness. This is a tall order. It's a difficult thing for them to do. They're going to need serious provisions for something like this. But Jesus has instructed them to go out with only the clothes on their back. That's it. No extra tunic, no money, no food. The only thing they have to rely on is the kindness of strangers. So hospitality, hospitality is their only provision. It's the only thing they have. Behind Jesus' instructions to the disciples is a lesson for us all, especially at a time when so many people are hurting in our society. Hospitality is crucial for the advancement of forgiveness and healing, of justice and mercy, and of righteousness and hope. So if hospitality is so important, how do we practice it? How do we practice it? Well, according to Jesus' instructions, it starts with offering a cup of cold water. Well, I started thinking, really, Jesus? Is it, is it that simple? Just a cup of water? You're talking about the advancement of the kingdom. It's huge. It's a big thing. And if something that big relies on hospitality, how is a cup of water going to adequately express that to people out there? How is the smallest gesture going to change anything? How is being kinder going to bring in God's kingdom on earth and in heaven? How is that going to work? Well, as I reflected on these questions, I thought about Scripture, and I was reminded of Jesus standing by a well, asking a woman, simply asking a woman, for a drink of water. She granted his request, and over that cup of water, a crucial conversation occurred. And both Jesus and the woman truly saw each other. They saw one another. And the woman's life was transformed that day, just simply over a cup of water. Hospitality is about recognizing the basic needs of another and creating space to see them and to hear their story. I heard a story recently about a refugee. And for me, it was an important reminder of those seeking safety or opportunities to provide for their families. This story was about a man from South America who had no way to provide for his growing family in his own country. So he wanted to come to the United States to find work. He knew he'd be able to do better if he did that. He scraped by saving up the $500 it cost to pay someone to come over at that time, and he came over illegally uh, across the border. He paid his money, and then he walked through the desert with a group of men under the cover of darkness unable to see if there was a snake or a scorpion on his path in front of him. He had no idea. He walked through the blaze of the unforgiving sunlight, wearing holes in his shoes and becoming exhausted from dehydration. One man in his 70s collapsed from the heat, so he picked him up and put him on his shoulders and carried him the rest of the way. When they crossed the border, they were immediately intercepted by the Border Patrol and taken straight back. Penniless and humiliated, he started all over again. He earned the $500 and he took the horrendous journey again. 
And this time, he made it to the United States, and he found good work. He worked 10-hour shifts with no breaks, though, making less than minimum wage. He never stopped. Even when he cut his hand open washing dishes, his boss wouldn't let him stop. And since he couldn't speak English, he couldn't express his needs, let alone defend himself under the harsh treatment that he was taking. After three years of saving up a little money under these conditions, he went back home, where he met his now three-year-old daughter for the first time. When asked how we as Americans could best help change things for people in his circumstances, the man's reply was this. He said, just be nicer. Don't treat us like we're horrible. Be kind. Is that too much to ask? Don't treat us like we're horrible. Be kind. Be kind. It starts with the power of kindness to lift the burden as we seek to see and celebrate humanity. With that spirit, when we offer a cup of kindness, that is meaningful hospitality. In spiritual terms, that small gesture takes seriously the instructions Jesus gives the disciples that day. Whoever welcomes you, welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me, welcomes the one who sent me. According to the Jewish law of Jesus' time of persons, emissary was synonymous with that very person. They were almost a mirror example of that person. They were going out on behalf of that person. And like Paul says in Galatians, you welcome me as Christ Jesus. To welcome a disciple with even a cup of cold water is to receive Christ. And to receive Christ is to receive God. And that is what we are all about. That's what we are all about as Christians. Now, before we get stuck on who we're supposed to show kindness to, limiting these little ones to being only Christians, let's fast forward to chapter 25 of Matthew's Gospel, where Jesus talks about our requirement to help everyone. And it means everyone. Jesus says, that extending kindness to any human being, welcoming any member of what the poet Maya Angelou beautifully terms a human family, especially those who are among our society and who are our most vulnerable outcasts, is to welcome Jesus and thereby to welcome the divine. It's a wonderful thought, the human family, that everybody being part of the human family. Beautiful words of Maya Angelou. One of my favorite theologians writes, writes this. It's a tough uh, piece of writing. They said, oppressive theology or a theology that welcomes those who fit a normative definition of the dominant culture while excluding those who do not is a ball and chain on the heart and the body of Christ. And with it, we keep each other in bondage. Very strong words, but very true words. Now we start to see why hospitality is crucial to the gospel. Why it's so important. Why it's essential to the kingdom of God. You see, when Jesus liberates us from having to distinguish between who is deserving in our judgment, and who is not, the shackles of partiality are loosed so that we can freely offer more and more of those simple acts of kindness to all people, of God's people, to all people. Hospitality frees us up to offer a cup of cold water to someone who might be in a situation completely foreign to our experience. Someone in a world that is outside our limited understanding. 
And when we are brought into a relationship with one another by that bond of hospitality, it creates something wonderful. There is no more host and guest, no more insider and outsider. There is only a space in which we listen and learn from one another. Value and honor one another until all the uneven ground on which we stand becomes level and the rough places are made plain. You see, hospitality changes us, both the giver and the receiver, as we recognize the humanity in the other, our perspective changes, it begins to change. And this is crucial to the gospel message, because unless we change our perspectives, unless we change the states of our hearts and our minds about the others, about those who differ from us, others become strangers or foreigners, and our society beats them down into vulnerable exhaustion, and we become part of that process. Until we are able to see strangers not as others, but as beloved, then we cannot be about the mission of sharing the good news of forgiveness and healing, of justice and mercy, of righteousness and hope. When we welcome the least of these who are members of his family, we, in fact, welcome Jesus himself. Who is Jesus telling us to listen to and learn from so that the gospel message would be advanced and God's kingdom would grow? Who would that be? Well, it's here. Just be nicer. Don't treat us like we're horrible. Be kind. It's for those people that are asking that question and those questions. Perhaps by practicing hospitality, we could be ushered into a mutual space where all of us, little ones, realize that each is loved equally by God. And that each of us, each of us, is crucial to God's kingdom of forgiveness and healing and justice and mercy and righteousness and hope on earth as it is in heaven. In the quietness of our hearts, let us pray together. God of abundant hospitality, Jesus tells us that in your house there are many mansions, a place for all of your children. So may our lives become a spacious sanctuary where all who enter it would find peace, rest, and adventure, and be blessed of your love for having been welcomed there. As we have been the recipients of your living water in Christ Jesus, to the point of our cup overflowing, move us from hostility to hospitality, so that we would have all we need to carry out Jesus' instructions of offering a cold cup of water to any of your children. It's for the sake of the gospel message and your kingdom of many blessings that we pray. Amen. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit,
the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness, and let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care, and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon the earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. And our collect for today. Almighty God, you have built your church upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Grant us so to be joined together in unity of spirit by their teaching, that we may be made a holy temple acceptable to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And our collect for Sundays. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And a prayer in times of conflict. O oh God, you have bound us together in a common life. Help us in the midst of our struggles for justice and truth to confront one another without hatred or bitterness and to work together with mutual forbearance and respect. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The prayers of the people on this fourth Sunday after Pentecost. God has called us to be priests for all people, offering to God the world's concerns. Let us then pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, and for all people according to their needs, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Blessed are you, our sovereign God, for you do not abandon what you have created but continue to make your grace known among us. We thank you for those you have chosen to speak your reconciling word in this age, and we pray for the grace to receive it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Blessed are you, our caring God, for you hear the cries of the poor. You see the tears in the eyes of all who mourn. You hear the, feel the pain of those in anguish and you come to the side of the lonely. Call your church to compassion and service. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Blessed are you, our God of peace, for you have bid us to make warfare cease and to place our trust in you who bore us up on eagles' wings. Raise up among us peacemakers and confound those who trust in chariots and horses. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Blessed are you, our God of justice, for you desire that all be one. Erase the prejudice and class divisions among us, that together we might share in your vision and harmony. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Blessed are you, our God of strength, for you do not desire harm, but you favor our health. Give us necessary measures of health, patience, and hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, pray for the United Church of Pakistan. In the World Council of Churches cycle of prayer, pray for the people of Argentina, Paraguay, and Uruguay. In the Kansas cycle of prayer, pray for St. Michael and All Angels mission. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those serving in the armed forces, Devin Allen, Murphy Bright, Ben Dibel, Coy Goodman, Michael Green, Harvey Hazelton, Drew Honeycutt, Benjamin Karpinski, Patrick McInerney, Alex Shaw, Jose Teo, Brian Weichel, Colin Kelly, Macaulay Garten, Frank Bedner, and Grant Bedner. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the homebound, Joanne Sherman, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For health and strength, Milalani Hazelton, Courtney Canova, Sharon Sinelli, Curtis Smith, Dixie Moss, Sandy Blasick, James Johan, Maxine Leapst, Elizabeth Appleyard, Frankie Woodman, Adam Greist, Barbie Steelman, Roger Aton, Craig and Jeanette Burris, Anthony Straker, Jack Harris, Spike Spiker, the Jaquish family, the Hoffman family, Florence Kirkland, Michael Siragusa, Jean McDowell, Maxine Haverfield, Ken Hogue, Matt Honeycutt, Joanne Devinney, Geraldine, Richard Mann, Don Hoffman, Patricia Miller, Ginger Waters, Maxine Jones, Kevin Eubanks, and Katen, Kayla, and Dominic Eubanks, and the Navajo Nation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For anniversaries, Dennis and Candy Phillips. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For birthdays, Stephen Mann, Kate Woods. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. This morning we have some anniversaries and birthdays to celebrate. It's a great day. And we want to celebrate Dennis and Candy Phillips. It's their anniversary uh, this week, and we want to pray for them especially. And Dennis is uh, helping us here today. So it's great to have Dennis with us. And uh, I know Candy is here with you in spirit too. So let's pray together. O gracious and ever-living God, look mercifully upon this couple who come to you seeking your blessing. On this their anniversary, continuous assisting them with your grace, that with true fidelity and steadfast love they may honor and keep the promises and vows they have made. Through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. And we have some special birthdays too. Stephen Mann, who we all love 
so much, and Kate Woods too, we're so privileged to have you both in our fellowship. Let's pray for their birthdays, that which they are celebrating this week. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts, may your peace, which passes all understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now we're going to share the peace together. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Let's share the peace with one another in our families and in our friendship groups. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. Together we say the words of the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. And a prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is Praise to the Lord.
Thank you so much for worshiping with us this morning. It's been absolutely wonderful to be here with you uh, in your presence. Uh, even though you're at home, I feel like you're here. I can see all your faces in front of me, and it's wonderful. And I have Tom and I have Dennis with me, and it's just a wonderful uh, way to do church, and I hope you're enjoying it very much. After the service, we have our coffee hour, and we would love for you to come to that. Please come along. Uh, you can get into that through uh, clicking on our link. And uh, we will send that to you at the beginning of the week. We look forward to that. And then on Wednesday, we have our noon refresher, which is at 12.30. Please do come to that. That's led by Deacon Karen, and she does a lovely job. And we pray for people and talk to each other about our needs and uh, other people's needs as well. Then in the evening, we have, our well, it's a movie night, and uh, we'll be discussing 13th the movie 13th. Please do watch that beforehand, and uh, it's a great movie, and we would love to have you there to talk about that. It's uh, really uh, great to hear people's views and their thoughts, and it's encouraging to all of us in these times. And on Friday, we will give you information about that as to whether or not we will be having our Friday evening, because it is July the 4th, and uh, we want to wish you a wonderful uh, July the 4th, I pray that you have the most excellent time with your families, that you enjoy that uh, holiday and that celebration, and uh, the celebration of the birth of this nation. What a great uh, uh, thing, and it's quite uh, interesting for you to be hearing that from an English person I know, but uh, it's pretty amazing, and I know it's such a wonderful, wonderful day, and I really hope you enjoy it with your families, that special, special time. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. And bless you all. Thank you so much.